I reckon that's the thumb though. It's got to be in it. Can't be anything else. <laughs> Hola chicos, soy Ricardo. Ewol Mallorca. Bienvenidos. Yeah, don't worry. I'm not going to uh, embarrass myself and try and talk any more Spanish. <laughs> so today I am just outside of, or well, just up the road from Yuk Monastery, um, and heading for Puj Tomir. As you can probably tell, the weather's been absolutely stunning. Uh, it's May the 11th now, so it probably won't drop below at least 20 degrees during the day until probably November. <laughs> That's it now. The weather is set in. So it's half past four in the afternoon. Uh, just parked the truck up uh, late as usual. Yeah, just heading, like I say, heading up to Puj um, which you may recognise the name of because I did a video, hiked up, did a day hike up there. From memory it should be about an hour and a half to get to the top, but it's a little bit warm, so it'll take me a little bit longer. I don't want to get too sweaty and hot, and plus there's no need to race, because like it's half past four. Um, and the sun doesn't set until half eight, I think it is, maybe even quarter to nine now. So I've got loads of time to get up there. So, Puch Tomir is 1104 meters, which makes it just shy of uh, Galazzo by 36 meters, I think. Like I say, it's a short hike, but it is pretty aggressive. It's just straight up for an hour and a half. Um, I seem to remember it being quite taxing on my legs last time. Looks like it's going to be pretty windy out there tonight. Blowing pretty hard down here and all the way up actually on the motorway, which when you drive a car that's shaped like a house brick <laughs> um, isn't so great <laughs> Here we go, this is what we're heading for. Excuse the screaming in the background. It's 12 kilometers there and back. Five hours apparently. Um, that's not what the book says. 1,102, the uh, map, sorry, the map says it's 1,004 and it's grade three. So yeah, it's quite busy up here. Um, I'm actually on the GR221 now from heading towards York Monastery. Uh, behind me uh, is direction of Puenza and also um, an educational centre. So I guess that's why it's busy. But soon we won't be able to hear the screaming kids. Because we'll be up in the hills. First 20 minutes of this walk, um, if you don't stop to take pictures and video all the time, is on tarmac. But you're surrounded by this stunning oak woodland. Which we don't have a lot left on the island. This is home oak. H-O-L-M-E. And yeah, like I say, there's not much of it left. And apparently it's um, because the majority of it was turned into charcoal uh, during Franco's reign because um, they didn't even get bottled gas on the island until someone told me mid-70s. Um, uh, because uh, well, the easiest way to keep people under control 
is there if they're too busy surviving. Um, so yeah, he wasn't a very nice man, that's for sure. Maybe I'll um, save up some pennies and go on uh, go gorilla planting, not planting gorillas, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> planting oaks all over the place. <laughs> Let's just be clear with that. So through these gates is the route to. Um, York Monastery, off down in that direction. Um, but we're not going that way. We are heading up a big hill, which, as the sign says, as I trip over a rock, this way. So that's it now for road walking, which is nice. So if you're new to my channel, which quite a few of you are, hola, you might be wondering what the GR221 is that I've mentioned a couple of times. Or you may be familiar with the GR routes which are all over Europe. Ours is the 221 and it's the Ruta de Pedra de Ensec. Uh, probably offending any Spanish people watching this. And it runs from Port Andrach right up to, uh, I think it runs to Port Puyenza now. And the plan is to run it all the way up to Cap Formentor, which would be pretty awesome. And I did it uh, two and a half years ago, I think it was. It is 6 a.m. sharp, and um, that's four minutes past, I lied. And we are at the start of the Ruta de Ensec, I believe it's called in Spanish, um, which is the GR221. 140 Ks, this is day one. I'll put a link in the description below if you're interested in that. But yeah, about 140 kilometers, I think it was. Whoa. You have to excuse me if I'm mumbling or <laughs> um, not speaking too eloquently, but I'm a bit unfit. And I went for a ride this morning. Did 40, uh, 40 kilometers on the road bike, which is the longest I've done in quite some time. So I'm pretty knackered. Bear with me. I actually went out two weekends ago. Um, for a one night bivy camp over towards San Elm area but unfortunately I forgot the SD cards there was nothing in the camera <laughs> but it was a lovely night anyway seriously warm seriously warm There was a sign back there that um, telling people not to walk on the scree slope, which is just ahead of me, but we peel off up the hill. Um, I presume they've had a couple of slides recently, because not so long ago, uh, a very large section of the road up to York Monastery disappeared down the hill and I just remember because I just drove past it <laughs> so yeah I'm presuming that's the deal with that uh, it's just behind me you can't see it because it's through the trees 
the scree slope, not the road to Yuk. So this is the route up here. Scree slope. Now, can't remember the name of this summit, but there is a stunning walk from Yuk Monastery over in this direction, all the way around it. Did it years ago, um, and it was, I think it was like 10 hours, but it was incredible. It was on a day like today as well, it was super warm. As you can tell, we are above the tree line now. And that's it. No more shade. <laughs> and guess who forgot their hat and sunscreen. Oh, suntan lotion, sorry, I'm English, not American. <clears throat> yep, done that. Every time. It's quarter past five, so the sun's steadily dropping now. So that should be all right. And tomorrow morning I'm getting down quite early. Not really sure that the camera is picking that up, but this is where we got to head off to. That's what we're following. Number two route to Pudge Tommy Air. That away. So, you can see what I mean about steep. Uh, I'll just come through down here. But I've probably climbed in the last, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. I've probably climbed easily 100 meters, I think. Hence why I'm perspiring slightly. These guys are swifts. Probably can't see it on the camera. It'd be pretty boring, but yeah, stunning. So yeah, again, you can't see it way off over in the background. Maybe I can zoom in. Just about see it through here. Uh, Bay of Palmer. To the right is Puch Mayor and I'm trying to get my bearings. I think this is Masanea. Should be. Yeah, it is. Because uh, I recognise this cliff edge here. You walk up through the valley, around the back of it, and then up onto the top. Let's put your manual, uh, put your mass in there. Steeper than I remember. Okay, so that you can see they put the chain in, but this isn't a really steep section. If you need a chain there, you probably shouldn't be coming up to be fair. <laughs> Behind me, you can see the uh, gorge I've got to go up, and the wind has completely dropped off now, so it feels like it's in the 30s. <laughs> There's a tiny breeze, but 
it ain't much. See the rosemary's in bloom, up here anyway. Amazing how much later it blooms at altitude, even here. And this variety is much more pungent and flavoursome than uh, the stuff we get down lower. So I'm going to take a sprig of it and try and propagate some. I remember this section really well now. Um, there was a, a trail race on, so there was a lot of people coming up here who I don't think normally would. And they were really struggling because it's super loose underfoot. It's basically a scree slope and uh, a very steep one at that. You wouldn't want to get caught if it moves. <laughs> As, uh, the camera probably doesn't do it justice, but yeah, it's got to be... Well, it's steep. <laughs> Super steep. Little useless fact for you. So Mallorca, actually, uh, the Blairics as a whole, apparently used to be um, part of a bridge between Southern Europe and North Africa, like millennia ago. And uh, the islands are all that's left of it. And they are fairly speedily crumbling away in geological geological terms anyway. Yeah. That's why you get all these cool rock formations everywhere. Which you probably can't see because the sun's in the way, but yeah. It's all really jagged and you know, these huge hills, mountains, well yeah, huge hills, small mountains, pop out of nowhere. We are almost there. Starting to level out a bit now, thankfully, because my legs are shot. <laughs> this is a pretty intense bike ride this morning. Flat, but intense, especially as I haven't really been riding a lot. So, my legs are screaming at me. <laughs> they want me to go home. Are you ready? of that. This here, that's what I remembered from last time. Uh, looks like a pretty good place to bivy. I don't think it's actually going to be that windy tonight, so... Um, just got a couple, no, not far. A couple more minutes to the top. So we'll see what it's like up there, but I don't think it's going to be that bad. But yeah. Whew. 
so quiet. And there's no one up here. I haven't seen anybody else all afternoon. Look at that drop. So what I was saying earlier about uh, Mallorca and the whole of the Balearics being a bridge between Southern Europe and North Africa, Africa, um, and uh, being worn down, and it's, it's mainly limestone. And uh, when you're up here, especially on places like Puigdemir, uh, Massanea, um, there's these huge holes, and they just disappear right down into the mountains. This being one of them, I don't know how deep this is, but not very deep it turns out. <laughs> but if you fell down it, you'd be pretty screwed. I mean, it possibly goes off underneath my feet and that, but yeah. Something definitely to keep an eye out for, even the shallow ones. <laughs> so there we are, the map was lying. 1,103 meters. And this plaque was put there on the 15th of December last year. So here we're at the top. Shoes and socks are off drying. T-shirt's drying. Got another top on. Long sleeve with my windshell, because you can probably hear it. The wind is coming through a bit. Uh, it's a little chilly, especially after getting so sweaty. But yeah. Stunning. And I've just noticed I can see Menorca. Let me zoom in. I doubt we'll be able to see it on this. But it is just over there in the distance. Just underneath this band of cloud. There's a little mound of rock in the water, and that is Menorca. Just look at that. <laughs> I don't know if you can see me waving, but wow, that is just awesome. I just noticed that the um, the tripod, gorilla pod, is soaking wet. And it's all from this, from that cloud that just came through, which hopefully you got, you've seen a nice time lapse of the cloud inversion. Um, it's all from that, so it could potentially be a very damp night. But um, I'm all set up. I've got the uh, steady Eddie, got the British Army bivvy bag. Um, the Rab Ascent 900 and the Neo Air X Therm, I think it is. So that's all in there. So, fingers crossed, unlike my old, um, my old uh, British Army bivvy bag, this one will keep me dry because um, I had a very, very damp night on. Uh, over by Puj Mayor um, and uh, got woken up at 
midnight to rain, which I knew was going to happen. Um, but it was only supposed to be for a couple hours. I woke up, well, I woke up here periodically through the night, but got eventually got up at about half past eight in the morning because it just wasn't going to back off and I just had to get off <laughs> off the hill. And um, I, uh, I got home and uh, I'd rolled the whole thing up, sleeping bag, um, the air mat, and the bivy bag, I'd rolled it up and just stuck it to the top of my pack and got home, opened it up and all this water poured out of it. <laughs> it was all soaking wet. It was mad. Hence why I've now got the camo bivy bag and not the green one. But uh, yeah. I've also noticed uh, some condensation on the inside of the lens of the GoPro. Considering I only bought it back in December and they're supposed to be waterproof and it's not been anywhere near any water I don't think it's even been anywhere near any rain That's not too good. So I might have to um, I might have to take a picture of that and uh, Let GoPro know but, uh, Yeah, so yeah, I'm all set up uh, We've got about 40 minutes until sunset which is at 10 to 9 tonight and um, yeah I'm gonna get some food on because like I said it's got a bit cold got some couscous tonight Ainsley Harriet couscous which I always enjoy and, uh, yeah There's loads of sheep up here right now. Look at that horrible view. Rubbish. Hardly worth the effort. Sometimes life gives you lemons. Other times it gives you Ainsley Harriet couscous on a mountain with a beautiful sunset. gone so is the sun almost it for May 11th 2019 stunning though got the hat on <laughs> be rude not to I've also got the gloves on as well because it's cold Wind chill of about zero, I reckon. But yeah. So, fingers crossed. It's gonna be a nice clear night. See some stars, a bit of the moon. I think this wind's only gonna be intermittent. Probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> My second couscous to eat. Then I make a coffee and uh, I climb into my pit now and try and keep warm. So, unless anything happens, see you in the morning.
morning folks it is quarter to seven and hopefully you've just seen the sunrise which um, has been obscured by the by the cloud unfortunately this morning it would be nice to have a bit of sun because <laughs> uh, it's quite cold probably around about five degrees not really much wind at all little breeze coming through um, bivy bag is pretty damp on the inside as well which is a bit annoying um, hence why it would be nice to have some sun warm me up and dry the bag out um, but hey ho yeah that was a good night it was, it was clear as a bell all night there was no cloud at all um, and I don't think it was forecast for cloud today so it's a bit weird but uh, looks like it's probably going to blow through quite quickly I got woken up by well, it was about half past three and it sounded like something going from there to there like really close to my head and uh, it spooked me for quite a bit because it it woke me up and I was kind of a bit uh, delirious from sleep and um, yeah I assume it was something flying around hunting up here hunting bugs but um, I didn't hear the squeaks of bats I don't know if all bats squeak or have an audible squeak that we can hear I don't know I can't imagine it was like swallows or um, swifts at that time of night but it sounded quite big so yeah that kept me awake for a little while but yeah it was nice really nice Yeah, I'm going to put some water on, have a bit of porridge, and um, yeah, probably head down about I don't know, somewhere between half past seven and eight o'clock, probably more eight o'clock, <laughs> if I'm honest, and then head back down to the truck. It's a pretty great view this morning, to be honest. Zoom in a bit. So yeah, you've got Cat Foreman Tour reaching out over here. Um, this You might be able to just make it out. Dark patch there, that is Menorca. Uh, Poyenza Bay down here with Port Poyenza over here. And actually Poyenza is quite far inland. But uh, yeah. And we've got Bay of Alcudia. Alcudia port there and then the rest of the island Pujmayor is somewhere through the cloud there I think that's been in cloud most of the night actually yeah. so that's my start to Sunday the 12th of May so yeah like I said I'm gonna get some water on get some porridge on the go and then um, head back down so I shall catch you in a bit So I just finished my porridge whilst looking at that view. It's pretty awesome. Um, I had these Quaker Oat So Simples boil, I think it's like 200 millilitres of water. Tear the top off the bag, pour the water up to the line. Make sure you mix it up really well. And um, 
Yeah, a few, minute, a few minutes later, Bob your uncle. Nice honey flavoured, oh no, golden syrup flavoured porridge. Thoroughly recommend them. So yeah, I guess I should get all my stuff packed up now. And uh, head on down the hill. So that's where I was last night. Leaving no trace, as always. That is the trig point for the top of Pudge Tomir. And that is the sun doing its best to come out. Which it probably will be in about an hour, I reckon. Burn off all this cloud. And that's where we're heading, over in that direction. Hey sheep, hey sheep, yeah, um, you'll see in uh, people's videos like Yellowstone and stuff like that, you have to walk around and warn the bears that you're coming and they'll hear you and 99% of the time scatter off. Um, if you do come hiking in Mallorca, you just gotta every so often just call out to the sheep, make sure that they know you're there so that they don't get surprised and go into attack mode um because uh yeah they're not like you know sheep back in the uk these guys are they're scary yeah you've been warned this was a pretty intimidating climb yesterday afternoon but it's even more intimidating descent this morning it's crazy steep Nice view though as you disappear down the side of the hill. Getting down pretty quickly. Such a steep descent, it's ridiculous. But great fun. Got a bit of a bead on. There's absolutely no wind whatsoever. Probably about 15 degrees now. These are the ones you really gotta watch out for mother with young see now she spotted me uh, she's happy with grass today so I might be able to get past without being hurt hey sheep hey sheep and just like that we're back in Civilization. Uh, it's just the uh, tarmac road now until I get to the truck. Hope you enjoyed the video and um, maybe inspired you to get your hiking boots on and jet off to Mallorca, get up in the hills, or just get up in the hills where you are or woods, anywhere really. Just get out of the house with your hiking boots on. Yeah, so anyway, I guess until next time, hasta luego. So, almost at the car now. Begs the question, why well, do this? Pisses me off. I've already picked up a few bits. It's 
been so clean up until this point and you're five minutes away from your car. Anyway, don't do it.